Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA front office show. As always, there's a lot going on in the world of the NBA to break down. We've got some players who are complaining, some players getting suspended, other ones healing up from injuries. We're going to dive into all of it. Joining me, as always, is Keith Smith. Follow him on Twitter at Keith Smith NBA. You can find me at Trevor underscore Lane. Keith, I guess first and foremost, apologies. There's a Lakers game tonight. Didn't have time to switch over to my other set. <laughs> so for any non-Lakers fans, I assume it's mostly Celtics fans, apologies in advance for having to put up with the Lakers Nation background. But again, I just didn't have time to switch over to my other set. It doesn't. It's funny. I don't even really notice it anymore. <laughs> I only notice it if you do something different. Yeah. Then it like jump, jumps out at me, but yeah, you, you never need to apologize to me for that. I'm I'm perfectly good good with it, and we'll uh, you know, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll power through if we, we must. will have to endure. I'm wearing green, so it oh, there we go. It we we balance bit, it out. So, yeah. that, that's fine. I like that. Go. It's a good way to look yeah. at it. Um, yeah. speaking of which, I guess to help balance thing out things out, let's start with a Celtics story. We heard earlier this week that the Celtics uh, might be interested in trading for Ben Simmons. And that Jalen Brown would be, have to be part of that deal. Now we've got a counter report saying not so fast. Jalen Brown is not going anywhere. Yeah, Mark Murphy of the Boston uh, Herald came out uh, pretty early on and said Celtics people told him no way, mm -hmm. uh, not not a thing, not not happening. And then we had um, Brian Robb of Mass Live. Uh, uh, Brian has covered the Celtics for a number of different outlets over the years. He came out with a report of basically, yeah, same thing has been told. And that matches things I've heard from folks mm -hmm. in the organization too, that there's no interest in moving Jalen Brown in, in the, what I was told was in any trade, never mind a trade for Ben mm. Simmons. So that was a uh, deal you know, there. I, now I'm not going to say just because if it ever happened, you know, someone will come back. So you said right. like it's, if it happens, it's going to be Ben Simmons plus, plus, right. plus, right. That that'll be, you know, what will happen. It'll be other players and picks involved. Cause the reality is Jalen Brown's a better player than Ben Simmons is right now. So that's uh that, that's why um, my guess is, as we say all the time, uh, these reports come from one side or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it's every few days, we're getting a report out of uh, Philadelphia that it is, um, uh, you know, we, they're interested in this team and they've talked to this team, but Philly has to have X, Y, Z. My guess is all these reports are coming out of Philadelphia versus uh, maybe both sides or even one of the other teams involved. So, yeah. So there, there we are with that. Yeah. I mean, it's very simple, right? Hey, yes, uh, we'll, we'll trade this guy if, but we have to get top dollar. We have to get this guy from your team. That's what the 76ers want to put out there. So again, it's pretty easy to see exactly. where that was coming from. Um, another star in the NBA, not happy with the officiating. Um, but this is a little different, right? Than normal years where we see people who occasionally will complain about officiating. They'll be talking about a particular play. Um, in this case, you've got Damian Lillard now joining in with James Harden and Trey Young, who have been complaining about the officiating all year, saying the rule changes have gone too far. In fact, Damian Lillard used the term unacceptable. Now, based on the reaction I've seen on social media, obviously a very informal way to judge this, but the majority of fans seem to be in favor of the rule changes that we've seen. But Damian Lillard yeah. shot one free throw last night in their most recent game. Trey Young, James Harden, they had free, three, free throws each. Um, it's changed quite a bit in this pendulum has swung and these guys are saying we've gone too far. We've overcorrected. Yeah. And, and it's funny cause I'm with you. I think most fans are, Hey, this is great. The games mm -hmm. are moving. They're, they're being played quicker. We're not seeing the stuff that just upsets everybody, especially if you're not a fan of either yes. team and you just turn on a game and you see this, these guys throwing their body all around or hooking guys and all the other stuff. I mean, a lot of these guys have the tricks, but I thought what was interesting is Damian Lillard, which I, I tend to agree with him, was I'm not – I don't do that stuff. Like, mm, in, in he – Yeah, There's I a mean, few to things. some extent, but he's not the – He's not the Trey no. Young, James Correct. Harden level. Yes. Um, I would also say he's not like Jason Tatum, who just kind of goes in there and throws himself around and hopes for a call mm -hmm. to come. I just there, there's foul drawing tricks, which I mean the best players have had forever. I mean Michael Jordan had it, Kobe Bryant yeah. had it. You know, even you know when I was early watching the game, you know Larry Bird had jo those Joel foul Embiid drawing tricks. Big, I mean, it? It, yeah, it's a, there's ones everybody mm -hmm. has, so it, it becomes a situation for me with these guys of it's it 
it's hard because the fans like it. But if you're a fan of that player or that team, you're getting frustrated because right. I'm seeing Nets fans, uh, Hawks fans, now Blazers fans saying, yeah, it is you know ridiculous that these guys are getting bounced around. And and Damian Lillard's numbers are bad are this year for 25% him. I mean, 19 from three. points. He's, yeah, he's at 25% from three. He's like under 30% or 39%, I think, overall mm-hmm. uh, shooting. And that's just not Damian Lillard. I mean, he came into the league you know, shooting well uh, right out of the gate. So, yeah, I've kind of... You know, I'm very curious to see how this one evolves because usually when we get a month, month and a half into the season, whatever the points of emphasis are, it starts to slide more back towards normal. So we're getting close to that point. What is it? It's November 10th Mm -hmm. as we record this. So, yeah, maybe, you know, in another couple of weeks, we'll start to see maybe this will lighten up just a little bit. But I hope they don't go too far and go back to the way it was because, quite frankly, I'm enjoying it kind of the way it is right now. Yeah, absolutely. I am too. And, I mean, Lillard had the little thing where he would go around a screen and then stop and jump kind of backwards-ish into a defender, especially when you shoot a three. Um, I never liked that one. But, again, that was, you know, coming from he's playing the Lakers and he would just do it time and time again. Um, But he's right. He's not nearly to the the level of – a of a Trey Young or a James Harden, James Harden, where he's dribbling, he reaches out and grabs someone else's arm and then yeah. goes up with like those guys really took it to the extreme. And Damian Lillard, I wouldn't put yeah. in that same category. So it will be interesting to see what winds up happening with this. Does the NBA kind of pull back a little bit? But like you said, don't go too far because I think in general, as much as James Harden might like it, might not like it, Trey Young might not like it. This has been a positive change for the league. So Agreed. we'll see. Yep. Uh, injury update on LeBron James. According to Brian Windhorst, the injury was uh, minor, more minor than even the Lakers initially thought. And rehab is going really well. So hopefully he will be back out on the floor sooner rather than later. That's some great news, certainly for a Lakers team that is incredibly banged up and uh, and could use it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and just as someone who... Man, I've done, uh, I guess I've done the full, what are we, yeah, 540, I feel like, on LeBron James, because I, <laughs> I, you know, I became an, I didn't like him, then I kind of started to like him, then I didn't like him again, now I'm back to, I just, uh, I, I like him, I appreciate him, I mean, when you're doing what he's mm-hmm. doing this deep in a career, it's ridiculous, so yeah, I want him to get back, I want him to get healthy, I want to see him out there, um, you know, play, playing, and that that's, then, and I'm not just saying that, but any all the commenters in the last video were saying I hate the Lakers. Oh. Like it's there, there you go. There, there's a positive Lakers take for you. <laughs> okay, the, you just you we got to get some purple and gold in your background, and then people will be I, will be okay yeah. with that part of it. Um, I appreciate that you called it purple. That 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 is a, that, instead I, of the forum that, blue. That, I know. Yeah. I know. Yes. Correct. It's purple. It is. And purple is a perfectly acceptable yeah. color. It's fine. There's nothing wrong you know, with purple. Hey, Orlando City soccer is purple, purple True. and yellow. So we're, you know, we, we love it. That's right. Um, speaking of the Lakers, Alex Caruso. Oh, boy. <laughs> I did a video on this earlier. I've got some Lakers fans that are at the point where they're saying, why are we talking about Alex Caruso? He's not on the team anymore. Let it go. Well, and some fans that are still pretty upset. Uh, Alex Caruso went on JJ Reddick's podcast, the old man in the three and explained how things went in free agency with the Lakers said that the Lakers initial offer was very low, that it was lower than two years, 15 million for him. Um, then he said he got some offers from other teams, was hoping to get a full mid-level exception. Didn't find that found four years, 37 million from the bulls, went to the Lakers and said, Hey, will you match this? They said, no. He said, well, I'd really like to stay. How about if I take less? He didn't say how much less, but he said, what if I take less? They said no. And so he said, okay, I'm going to go to the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Keith, obviously the luxury tax looms large in a situation like this, given the Lakers situation. But a lot of Lakers fans were not happy to get that kind of confirmation that the Lakers just weren't willing to spend the money in order to keep a very, very good defender in Caruso. And a guy who'd become a huge fan favorite, right? He got, kind of fought his way onto the Bald roster, Mamba. self-made player. You know, yeah, it's yeah, you, you get all that stuff. And no, those are guys, right? We all uh-huh. like those guys. Those are the ones everybody starts rooting for. Those are the guys you become attached to. And then if they become good quality players, as Alex Caruso did, it, it becomes even more than that. Because now they're no longer just kind of like your your fun victory cigar, if you will, um, in games. But right. yeah, it's it's I I guess this is one where at the time, it didn't look as bad because they were they in effect replaced him with uh, Wayne Ellington, Malik Monk, K- 
Kendrick Kemp Nunn, um, more or less, and Kemp mm-hmm. Bazemore, yeah. And then uh, some of that money that might not have gone to Talon Horton Tucker did go to him to lock him up long term. So I think you, at the time it felt, all right, this is not the end mm-hmm. of the world, right? We we can, you know, we're we're moving on here. Now I think it feels almost worse because it's all these injuries and everything else has cropped up. And you're looking at me, like, man, the Lakers could use an Alex yeah. Caruso right now. But it's one of those where it's prob we're gonna probably go up and down this roller coaster a few more times throughout the year, and you're just gonna kind of evaluate it at the end of the year. But yeah, I, it's it's I don't know I. I I find it hard to get overly upset with with L.A. and Rob Palenka for kind of setting a line and saying, look, we're just we're not going to go past mm-hmm. this because you you have to do that. Otherwise, that's when you start getting crazy with things. And I my guess is they felt like we have guys we can go get to replace what he gives us and we can move on in a different way. So I, I don't know. I just, I can't get overly worked up over this. It one. would have pushed their total salary up to about 230 ish million. Caruso's contract alone, I believe would have incurred about a $40 million luxury tax hit. Yeah. Um, probably. So, it's, so it's something up there like that. So I can understand yeah. why, and it's easy for fans to say, spend the money right it's easy when it's not when it's not your <laughs> yeah. money um, it's not your money but yeah. that being said your championship team you've got lebron james who's 36 years old here going on 37 next month um you've got all these start you got anthony davis you've got you bring in russell westbrook carmelo anthony you got all these older players that are ready to win right now i mean the the thought is also that well you should if you're going to bring in those guys then you have to be willing to pay the price in order to build a win now team and caruso can certainly help you win right now so i understand both sides and understand why fans would be frustrated i can also understand why the lakers wouldn't want to just light 40 million dollars or whatever it wound up being on fire so but interesting to note how it went back and forth yeah uh yeah Sure. Let's talk a little bit about Nikola Jokic. We saw that rough shot on Markeith Morris. Markeith Morris actually out tonight, Lakers versus Heat, due to whiplash from that particular shot. From And not a surprise, he was hit hard by Jokic. And Jokic mm-hmm. has been suspended for one game as a result. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on that? Was that suspension enough? Was it too much? Not, not enough? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think it's enough. I, I, I think it feels fair mm-hmm. uh from from what what they gave him he does not have a history of things like this that always factors into punishment if it's kind of your uh draymond green types or your repeat offenders they tend to get hit a little harder uh when they have something come up and when you're uh uh, uh Jokic in this case he doesn't have a long history of this and you know it's it he was remorseful immediately yeah. after uh, very, you know, I'm not like, I shouldn't have done yeah. it. I feel bad. I think felt bad because, uh, Morris did get hurt out of this. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's not a good look for anybody involved and all the nonsense that continued the next day, which I mean, in fairness, I enjoyed a little bit of and had some laughs at too, but now we're into a position where, yeah, this, you know, makes sense. And, and it's funny. Cause I, I said, uh, to someone earlier today, and we all care, and we won't care again until they play again, yeah. which is in a few weeks, and then we'll It'll, forget it happened right. entirely. It'll be a talking point again in a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Clay Thompson reportedly looking good in workouts. Uh, Brian Windhorst mentioned that he looks like he's ready to be not just back, but back, back, like back to being the Clay Thompson that we haven't seen since 2019. Uh, that's exciting, particularly with the Warriors playing mm-hmm. such good basketball already. To put in a guy like Klay Thompson, especially the way the NBA is right now, where every team needs guys who can defend wings like the way Klay Thompson can when he's at his best, and of course his shooting, uh, this could be a big deal for the Golden State Warriors if he can really come back as himself. Yeah, absolutely. And the Warriors are in a position where we said it yesterday, I think, they're not going to continue to win 90% of their games. It's just not. Yeah. They're not that Warriors anymore. But getting him back is is huge because I think now, because he hasn't played in two years, people have kind of forgotten just how good Clay Thompson right. was. I in and, and I'll I'll hand up, I'll admit there were a couple of things I missed too. He averaged 20 points per game or more, five straight seasons going into being injured. He has never shot less than 40% in a season from three. 
like that, like talk about yeah. that. You know, this is a guy who just his his you know game is just it's great and it's so complimentary to what they do. I don't know that he's going to be the defender that he was before he got it's hurt. Hard to do that. Where it was, hey, we will put him on point guards and all that because it's just, I mean, it's been two years. We're going to have to see, you know, what it looks like. But yeah, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see him get back out there. He's, you know, one of my favorite players just because of how quick his release mm-hmm. is, all the things he does off the ball and in that, and just, you know, that Warriors team is back to being fun to watch. Like they're, you know, ball popping all over the place. Steph doing Steph stuff and you know that they, they, they were, you know, it's funny they they are the prime example to me of, uh, you know, live long enough to, to become the bad guys. And that's kind of what happened there. Right. I yep. mean, everybody loved them the first couple of years. They were that fun, you know, up and coming warriors. And then, then we got a couple of years in and everybody's like, good Lord, this team, get rid of them already. There was, there was a little bit of warriors fatigue, but also there was the sense that when Kevin Durant joined in free agency and sure. in a completely 100%. unique situation, right. Cap wise, with the the massive yep. cap spike where nor under any other circumstance they would not be able to get a player of Kevin Durant's caliber so it, a lot of fans kind of cried foul at that point they said well that's just not even fair for Kevin Durant to go to yeah. that team that just yeah. won 72 games um you, you can't can't do that and so that I think contributed to the the anti warriors sentiment that we started to see, but I think it it's starting to come around a little bit again now that they've been bad for a little bit sure. people are like oh okay yeah. cool they're they're fun again well, and Draymond Green didn't do any favors for them, True. just with some of his antics and you know some of that stuff. But yeah, it's uh, you know there. Uh, one other injury update because it, it came through while we've been talking here. Isaac Okoro is going to play for the Cavs mm-hmm. uh, tonight, returning from a hamstring injury, and that's big for them with Colin Sexton out. They need they need somebody else who can fill in at that guard spot. We talked about when we talked about the Sexton injury how limited they are with players at that guard spot there. So, so Cavs are getting a uh, healthy ish again and been moving back in the right direction. The seven and four Cleveland Cavaliers that are on a four game win streak, the uh, maybe the surprise of the early season. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they've been they've been surprisingly good. So hopefully that that mm-hmm. you know, Coro gives them a little bit of a boost further, especially dealing with that Colin Sexton injury. I misspoke. I said the Warriors won seventy two games. They won seventy three. They broke the seventy two game record. Is what I meant yes. to say. That doesn't matter. They didn't win the title. That's what Twitter. That's right. Me. That's right. That's the only thing that matters. <laughs> Rings. Yep. With, a, with a Z. Rings. With a baby. Z. With a Z. That's all yeah. that matters. Multiple Zs, if you will. Uh, Danny Ainge, your guy. Danny Ainge, could yeah. he be taking over in Portland for Neil Olshay? We know Olshay is under investigation right now for misconduct. I mean, obviously, we're a ways away from this happening, but there's already speculation sure. that maybe Danny Ainge might be the guy to take over there. What do you, what do you think about that? Like how would Celtics fans feel about Danny Ainge taking over there? Fine. Is this yeah. no, no concern. Yeah, they'd there. be fine. Yeah. It'd be no issues. Yeah. They, I mean, especially if then he turns around and trades Damian Lillard to Boston, <laughs> uh, which we've, we've seen uh, old friends help the Celtics out on occasion yeah. uh, there. It's uh, Kevin yeah, McHale. No, well, in all seriousness, no, no one would be, everyone would be fine. They'd be fully understanding of like, Hey, uh, I don't know how many people know too. Cause I think Danny Ainge gets associated with Utah because of his BYU sure. uh, days as a player, but he grew up in, in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, he was the first. And I think this may still hold true. The only first team, all American uh, three sport athlete in football, basketball, and yeah. baseball, um, which is pretty, pretty, you know, insane when you think about it to, to, to have that much talent, uh, you know, people forget too. Danny Ainge played in Major League Baseball. Like it's, you know, this guy was an unreal athlete. Uh, back I did, I did so. not know that until a couple of weeks ago. I came across that that he actually really? played in MLB. Yeah, it was just, it was probably yeah. something I heard years ago, and then when I saw it, I'd forgotten. You know, at this point, so, um, yep. but I saw it and I was like, man, that that is absolutely amazing. And it's in well, yeah. I'd have to dig further. But how they figured that out? Because MLB season and NBA, there's some overlap yeah, was, there. What did the major? Yeah, it was a mess. They, you, there's stories you can go read about it. And uh, in uh, Red Auerbach's famous quote, I believe, was, "Yeah, we we got lucky that Danny Ainge couldn't hit a curveball <laughs> um, because uh, he was a big part of some championship teams for the Celtics uh, back in the '80s." But yeah, I, no one would feel bad about it. We'll see. I, that Portland situation is going to take a while, mm-hmm. but. There's a lot of murmuring that Neil O'Shea is in, in trouble. He was probably already on thin ice to just be uh, realistic from performance-wise. Mm-hmm. That team has 
not been what they wanted to be. Uh, with that, there was a the Chauncey Billups hire was controversial to say yeah. the least. Now, I never want to let ownership off the hook with those things because they they green light yep. all that stuff. Uh, you know, the front office makes the decision, but ownership has a say in all that. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting. Well, we'll see, um, yeah, ultimately where uh, where that one goes. But yeah, no one would be upset if Danny Ainge popped back up there from the Celtics side at least. Uh, let's finish things off with Kevin Garnett. You had some stuff on him. Yeah. I know there's a documentary coming up on him, and he is one of your all-time favorite players. Ah, sorry, I, I muted to cough, <laughs> and then I couldn't get it off mute. I'm a mess. Um, That's okay, Keith. That's <laughs> so, okay. Anything is possible. <laughs> it is anything is possible, and I get a little ver- I get a little ver- clumped when I talk about about KG. He's my uh, that's my guy. Yeah, he's one of my all time favorite players. Um, there was some interesting stuff. Michael Pina um, did a went and hung out with him for forty eight mm-hmm. hours at his home in Minnesota, um, and and wrote a long article about some things KG's up to now, some things he uh, is is uh, from from his past as a basketball player for GQ. Highly recommend everybody go check out the article. Really cool. Some pretty cool pictures. There's a, a pr- pretty sweet setup KG has in Minnesota. But uh, the first thing was with, with the Phoenix Suns, uh, he talked about why, if we all remember, there was a there was uh, the three teams were on Garnett's mm-hmm. list when he got traded for the Celtics, Lakers, and Suns. Um, there was a lot of talk initially that he wanted to go to the Suns. And Robert Sarver uh, told Steve Nash, who had to be the one to call KG. Now, remember, Nash was still a player mm-hmm. then, and say, if you come there, you're going to have to take a pay cut and they're not going to keep all the, the guys that you want the team to keep around. And Kevin Garnett was basically like, yeah, I'm out. Like with that. But wait, uh, why, why did Steve tiny... Nash have to be the messenger in that yeah, situation right? in terms of Brutal. the finances and all that kind of stuff? And then if you're Robert Sarver, I mean, look, I guess it fits the bill here, right? But if you're getting a guy like Garnett, you pay what it takes because yeah. you could be winning a championship. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, there's stuff in there. Steve Nash. This is all from Kevin Garnett. So Steve Nash po- apologized. He was disappointed on the behalf of Phoenix and their ownership and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Next part was uh, talking about him. Uh, then it came down to the Celtics and the mm-hmm. Lakers. Um, he had already met, but uh, in the, no tampering was involved in any of this because the Timberwolves gave him permission to talk to to these teams. So he'd already met with the Celtics, and um, and he was only going to go there because remember he had no trade clause, right. he had to approve any trade and all that stuff. Um, but before he made a final decision, he wanted to talk to Kobe yep. Bryant. Kobe Bryant was in China at the time, and. Again, KG's side of the story was I needed to have a conversation with him. I couldn't talk to Phil Jackson, none of those guys. I'm not a phone guy. You know what I'm saying? But it's Kobe. I need to go talk with him. But what he was told was Kobe was too busy and couldn't be bothered to talk with him while he was in China. Um, So KG was like, at that point, it was all right, it's off. Uh, he later met with Antoine Walker, who it's extensive time with the Celtics, convinced him, hey, you you can win there. And in between that point, the Celtics also acquired Ray Allen, which then made Kevin Garnett feel better about going right. there. Uh, then he says after he became a Celtic, he talked, Kobe reached out to him and said, you were trying to get in contact with me? No, I'm serious. I found out later this is a mess. Like, well, you're in the wrong color, man. How are you going to go to Boston of all places? Yeah. This is a mess. And KG says it was all good. I always loved playing against Kobe, but yeah, it probably would have been a different level playing with him. Yeah. So cool article, lots of cool stories in there from KG. Check, check it out. Really good stuff. It also talks about Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Uh, unlike so many of the uh, retired guys, he is highly complimentary of today's players and uh, LeBron James in particular, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So I highly recommend everybody go check that out. It's at GQ.com. Uh, Michael V. Pina on Twitter. He, he's uh, retweeted. I've also retweeted it on my account as well. Definitely something interesting to check out. And, you know, I had always heard from the Lakers side of things, the version of the story was that he actually tried calling him a few times and Kobe didn't see his phone or didn't answer something to that effect. Um, and again, there could just be something lost in translate translation there, but then the thing with the Celtics went down and it was just a missed opportunity there. Uh, and also yeah. we heard, you know, that KG was not going to go to Boston until they made that trade to get Ray Allen. He wasn't interested in, in yeah. going there until they, until yeah. they made that deal. Then it was like, okay. Um, and of course, Kevin McHale being the guy running the Timberwolves <laughs> probably didn't, in, in didn't hurt. hurt things as well. It made him, I will say that's gotten overblown a little bit in my, maybe my Celtics bias is coming in here, but 
there was a lot of um they got a pretty good package you know i mean what al jefferson and what was it al jefferson and al jefferson gerald green who was still very highly thought of uh ryan gomes who was a role player a lot of people liked um they got three first round Mm -hmm. picks which was now what was funny was one of the picks was their own yeah because they had stupidly given it up in a trade that involved ricky davis at the time we didn't Um, value first round picks the way we do right now they weren't yes exactly yeah Yeah. so it's you know there and and what's interesting too if you go back and look i think people forget now that trade happened why i know when that trade happened because it happened on my birthday it happened july 31st so it was that's the point where everybody's shutting down yeah. in the off season. You're, you're basically shutting down and saying, all right, we'll see you in a few weeks when camp starts. And ultimately what happened um, was Boston gave up so many guys for just KG. They'd also done the trade for Ray Allen where they gave up a couple mm-hmm. players. They didn't go out and fill a roster on the fly with, there wasn't a lot left. Uh, they got very lucky that James Posey had been kind of in a contract stalemate um, and couldn't come up with something. They were able to sign him. Uh, then they picked up, it was like Scott Pollard mm-hmm. and Eddie House and all these other guys. And it was like, all right, we're going to run out of starting five with Rondo in his second year uh, as right. an unproven second year point guard. Mark. Yep, Kendrick Perkins um, with that, and, and we're going to go. He, my favorite part of that whole thing is there was a point on July 30th. Now, Twitter wasn't around. Yeah. Oh, so you, you, Imagine you if it was refreshing Twitter. Right. So like I was literally I was living in California at the time um, in Southern California, of all places, surrounded by Lakers fans. And we were sitting there refreshing. Every, we must have had 20 pages open, mm-hmm. refreshing all these pages, looking for updates. And there was a point fairly late in the day on July 31st where it was. All right. The trade's done. It's going to happen. But. The Celtics are keeping Al Jefferson because his salary wasn't needed oh, to be geez. in there. And it was like, holy crap, they're going to keep him and trade Kendrick Perkins instead. Don. Ultimately, how it right. went down. I, I don't know that it would have worked out quite as well, to be quite honest, because Perk's defense and rebounding and being just willing to be the the, the garbage man there uh, ended up playing a big part in that where Jefferson wasn't quite that guy. But just, yeah, that was a what, what a surreal period of time that was with, with that. And just I think he gets forgotten that they built that championship roster like with, you know, on the fly with just not a lot, a lot to pick from. And then obviously good help. P.J. Brown came out of retirement. Right. Uh, late in the year and join the team uh, there. So yeah, they, you know, just, yeah. Uh, but cool stories. Uh, it's, this is where for many, many reasons we wish Kobe was still yes. around. Cause I would love to, I'd love to see like Kobe, KG, Paul Pierce, even Steve Nash. They could get him to do it. Just all sit around and talk about, stories oh my then. gosh like just it's one of my favorite things to do when a bunch yep. of old players sit around and tell stories and clearly these guys have a whole bunch of uh you know history and all this and we could probably get a lot of stuff because the cool thing with uh, those guys is they even kobe you know before he unfortunately passed he didn't really hold back either he was willing to talk you know he, he was gonna let people know what, what he you know want, wanted to say so which is you know we, we need more guys like that that are willing to kind of you know say well, and piece. i think that to a degree too with the older guys you're gonna get stuff that never saw the light of day whereas now like, yeah, with, the, with the presence of social media the way it is we're hearing yeah. every little bit like it, like you yeah. know lebron goes shopping is a story right like like lebron goes to the grocery <laughs> yeah. store so like that's that you know people know about yeah. that well, they all want to control the exactly. narrative too so much. So they're going to come out and say their piece versus letting somebody else tell the story for them. Yeah, 100%. And, and so that's why, like, yep. like for example, at, at Kobe's memorial, you know, like Michael Jordan starts talking and he starts going in depth about this relationship he had with Kobe Bryant and how he was like a mentor. Which we didn't yeah, know. And we're, I mean, yeah. I, was, I was there and we're, everybody's looking yep. around like, how did no one know about that? How did no one know about how, like, yep. how close they actually were? Throughout their entire careers, yeah. all this time playing together. And so I think you get kind of that element with the older guys where they were able to keep some yeah. things out of kind of the media sphere. And so I think that'd be, that'd be really well, interesting. I just appreciated, you know, Kobe being so candid when he was like, there was a point I thought I was going to the Bulls. Yeah. Yep. Like I thought it was done. Like I thought that deal was finished and it was going to happen. And I was, you know, kind of ready to, to, to go. And then, you know, clearly didn't and, you know, it worked out great for the Lakers because I got a couple more titles um, after, but yeah, it, it was just, yeah, I, 
I just, I mean, KG clearly his entire career was going to say whatever right. he wanted, whenever he wanted um, with that. And then they, they, they didn't really get into the Ray Allen stuff, but there's been rumors and reporting that, uh, that, that that's maybe starting the thaw oh. a little bit. Cause that's, that's been a thing for the Celtics. They would love to get those guys mm-hmm. all together, uh, get them all there. Paul Pierce, just, they, they just did a thing with him uh, there uh, in Boston. So yeah, I'd love to see all five of those guys uh, back together, you know, uh, might be five more years when Rondo, finally decides to hang it up because he's starting to feel like someone who's never going to retire. Um, but yeah, I would love to see all, all those guys get, get together and just kind of, yeah. uh, as they say, get, give them their flowers when you can, right? Because we, we we don't do Rondo's going to get offered a coaching job at some point. At some point, oh, he's going to get, like the second he decides he's yeah. even thinking about it, he's going to have mm-hmm. a coaching job to step right into. And he's... You know what's funny? I don't know that he's going to do it. You think? I don't know if he's going to... I think he might be the kind of guy who would be so miserable because they're not seeing the game he the way he sees it. That could be the doing case. Doing things the way he would want. Like I, I don't know way that happens sometimes with some of those guys where it's just they're 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 we can say what we want about Rajon Rondo, but is the way he thinks and sees the game is at a level way up yeah. here. Uh very different from a lot of other uh players. And and yeah, I'm not sure that he that he would be able to to get through that and be happy. I think that, that dynamic would be interesting, but he's also I think been preparing himself to coach for sure. a while like there's, yeah there's a story from just a few weeks ago that the lakers i maybe they were playing okc whoever they were playing they were playing somebody and things weren't going well especially at the end of the first half and frank vogel is pissed off and he goes back into the locker room and he's getting ready to go show the guy's stuff on film and he walks in and rondo's already doing it rondo's already got the film <laughs> yeah. up and he's going over everything with all the guys and he's just like vogel just kind of goes okay cool you know like yeah yeah i think these last few years being a uh a bench player with a lesser role than what he always mm-hmm. held. Right. He was not he, even, even I know he's a big part of the Lakers winning the title mm-hmm. in 2020, but for a lot of that year, he wasn't no, a huge part no, of the rotation no, no. every single Rondo night and those kind of it. things. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I think you're probably right there. I think he's got, got that experience of like, I'm watching now from a different point of view versus being out there. But yeah, I'd be, I'd be very curious. That's a good, somebody should go get that story and find out like, what should, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, after I'm sure he's going to be like, I'm playing right now and I'm going to play and yeah, we'll go from there. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see ultimately uh, with that one. But yeah, it's, that's something we should do at some point where we should do a show when we're looking uh, to feel like who, who would make good coaches of current players and start to run run through that. So we'll, we'll put it on our, our never ending list of ideas. If, if the, if this league ever slows down long enough that we need to, to scrounge for topics. Yeah. I don't know if it will, but <laughs> we'll see the way no, the, end, the, way the NBA not. is. But it would be something that'd be interesting to explore. Um, yeah. All right. We've got a big night in the NBA tonight. Be a busy yeah. one. 13 games. My goodness. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> Going to be a busy night. Make sure, everybody, that you do subscribe right here to the NBA Front Office YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications. We really appreciate everybody who has subscribed so far. If you're listening to the podcast version of this, make sure that you do follow us over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. We certainly do appreciate it. Till next time, everybody. Stay safe and see ya.